The Dempster Highway is one of only two roads in North America that crosses the Arctic Circle. Other than a short segment of pavement in Inuvik and the start of the highway, the entirety of the 886 kilometer road is unpaved. The Dempster Highway is technically the only public road in North America that goes all the way to the Arctic Ocean as its sister, the Dalton Highway, is closed to public access beyond Dead Horse, just a couple miles short of Prudhoe Bay. The Dempster Highway will be the final leg in my journey to the Arctic Ocean. This is the road that's going to take me up to Tuktoyaktuk and the Arctic Ocean. Um, I'm pretty nervous, actually. I, I've been nervous about this the whole trip. Um, I've heard a lot of scary things about this road, but a few people that I've talked to who've driven this road and are actually familiar with it have reassured me that it's fine as long as you take your time. And uh, I can already attest to the fact that it's pretty bumpy. There's quite a lot of washboard. Yeah, we're just gonna take it slow and not get a flat tire. I drove the top of the world highway to Dalton today and yesterday, and uh, that is also unpaved, but this road is already markedly worse. Uh, I would say the washboard is some of the worst that I've seen so far. We are eight kilometers in and things are going good. Resident Dahl's sheep add calcium and magnesium to their diet by drinking from Engineer Creek, which is rich in both. It is day three. We are 343 kilometers in out of 886 to Tuktoyaktuk, and we're going to be hitting the Eagle Plains shortly and our first fuel stop. stop was $105 Canadian, but they sure were friendly about it. some of the prettiest poop I've ever seen. I guess the grizzlies are still gorging on berries up here. 
I don't really know where to stay tonight. Oh god, so many nests. Well, we're camping in a cloud tonight. Didn't go very far today. I was hoping to go hiking on these mountains today, but uh, the weather's just really not cooperating with that notion. But maybe I can hit him on the way back. So something I've learned recently is that instant coffee doesn't have to taste terrible. I really like this brand. Um, I thought it was kind of cheesy at first that it comes in a glass container, but uh, most instant coffee comes in plastic and I think that makes a difference. And the instant coffee itself smells pretty good. And then the mistake that most people make when they're making instant coffee is they burn it. So I'm just gonna put two spoonfuls in here and then I'm gonna add some cold water. And so we are just going to stir this up and dissolve all the grounds before adding the hot water. I don't drink coffee every day anymore. I try to stay away from caffeine as much as possible, but I barely slept at all last night and I need to do some driving today. So it's kind of a matter of safety. One of the realities of living in a van is that you don't always get a great night's sleep. Sometimes it's traffic noise, sometimes it's weather. Sometimes you feel unsafe in the place you're at, which is my least favorite situation. But yeah, last night the wind and the rain kept me awake and <sighs> and I smashed the lens to my camera this morning. I wanted to take a time lapse with it and uh, the wind blew it over. Mm. This is genuinely better than a lot of coffee I get at diners and other places.
Wow, that's fascinating. So that mound back there, I thought that was volcanic, but it's not. It's called a pingo, and it occurs when a lake dries up, and then uh, basically the permafrost forms around the dry lake, and there's a little bit of water in the lake bed that prevents the permafrost from forming in the lake bed. And so the expansion from the surrounding ice forces that earth up, and then the trapped water in that ground freezes and forces the ground even higher. So it creates kind of like a, what looks like a cinder cone, but it, but it's not. That's crazy. It is cold out there. Tuk the Uktuk is definitely an interesting place. Sometimes when I'm traveling, I get this sense of being totally foreign. And I wasn't expecting to get that in Canada, but I'm definitely getting that kind of feeling here where I feel like everyone's way of life here is not very relatable to mine. And it's just, it's pretty insane to me that people to this day choose to live up here. And I mean, it's really cool, don't get me wrong. It's just way different from what I'm used to. Feels pretty weird to be heading south today. I've more or less been making my way north since April, so it's kind of a shock to be done. I feel like the longer I've lived in a van, the more I encounter moments like these where I'm like, well, now what? And uh, I don't really know. I kind of have a vague plan that I want to go to the East Coast this fall, but I'm not really married to that either. So I guess we're just gonna hit the road today and see where we wind up. problem uh, I think I smoked the alternator the problem is it's been really cloudy recently so I've been using my battery to battery charger and especially if the van is at idle the alternator can't keep up with the battery to battery charger and the headlights going which is usually not a problem but you need to have your headlights on all the time when you're driving on this road and uh, I've pulled over a few times and got back in and seen that uh, the charging voltage was really low and that's of course, really bad for the voltage regulator and the windings on the alternator, so now I can't even run um, my headlights and battery to battery charger while I'm driving. And if I stop, uh, the alternator can't keep up with the headlights. So yeah, I can smell it. it. Smells like hot electronics out here. Um, crap, <laughs> this is not when I, where I wanted to have to deal with this. 
So yeah, I think there's a really good chance that I just overheated the alternator and it'll be fine in the morning. I'm crossing my fingers that I didn't fry it. I promised myself that I wasn't going to run the headlights and the battery to battery charger at the same time, but it's just been impossible up here. And I figured it was fine as long as I don't idle the engine while doing that. But of course I kept doing that on accident because I was pulling over a bunch. And I think the alternator has been weak for a long time. I noticed in Washington, that I couldn't run the headlights and the air conditioning at the same time. Otherwise, this same thing would happen. The, the charging voltage wouldn't be able to keep up. But all things considered, uh, I would have never stopped at this campsite and it's actually really pretty. So, uh, and it's quiet because uh, I haven't had a good night's sleep in quite a while because I haven't been able to find a quiet campsite lately. And uh, it seems like this is gonna be the ticket. I just have to uh, put my anxiety about my alternator away. <laughs> It's so weird relying on a, a machine like this. I feel like I think about my van all the time. It's probably not healthy. Uh, what I should be thinking about is how I'm out of clean socks now and I can't drive to a laundromat right now. <laughs> Got a lot of different ideas swimming around in my head. It was raining this morning, which made me realize what was different about yesterday, and that's that it was raining. So not only was I running my lights, the blower fan, listening to music and have the headlights on, I was also running my wipers. And I think that was the straw that broke my alternators back. So it's not raining right now, so I shouldn't need the wipers. So I'm gonna head out. I wanna get south because there's no sun up here, there's a lot of rain, and if I do have to pull this apart, I don't wanna do it here. I wanna do it closer to a paved road. So I think while I have the opportunity, I'm just gonna hit the road, and I'm hoping right now, I'm gonna turn the van on and everything's going to at least appear fine. Because if not, I don't know. The glow plugs use a lot of power, so the battery's gonna be pretty low once I crank this over. Uh-oh. Oh, no. <sighs> Crap. That's worse than I expected. Okay, so the glow plugs turned off. Uh, they stay on for a few minutes. And now we're okay. We're back to a charging voltage. I don't dare turn my lights on. I mean, I'm going to have to if a car approaches me, but uh, yeah, we're moving. We are moving. Charging voltage is on the low end of nominal. We're at 13.6 and things appear to be more or less stable. I just can't use my headlights or my wipers or my windshield sprayers or my brakes or the radio or charge my phone or roll up and down the windows. Otherwise the charging voltage drops. And of course I have been using my lights and wipers intermittently and it has been recovering from that. So that's good, but I don't wanna do any of those things too much because I think each time I do, I'm taking some life off the alternator. So I found a campground in Dawson that has a 15 amp hookup and it's across the street from an auto parts store. So that seems perfect. I'm just gonna go there and replace my alternator at that campground.
Well, I have four kilometers of the Dempster to go tomorrow. It's kind of hard to recommend this. Um, and maybe I shouldn't make that assessment right now because I'm tired and I'm looking at all the things that I'm going to have to do to get my van cleaned up and ship shape and it's going to be a lot of effort. board down on the side of the road. Oh, that thing? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm stopped in the middle of the road forcing you to stop doing your job. Because I need you to go down there and get that for me. Oh, well, I don't think that's gonna happen.